dear respected moderator, Reverend Mos Doctor uh, Francis Bishop of Simago, and all the dignitaries on the dais of the dais. Uh, thanks very much. I don't know how many of you are going to listen to me now because it's like long time sitting and uh, people are like a little bit tired. But anyhow, I have to just present in 10 minutes. Uh, my title is The Cultural World and the Aspiration of uh, Generation Z. The farmies and the seminaries, in the seminaries and the convents of the present time belong to EZ generation, or we call it as Zers. The generation of digital brain and techno based. This is a significant difference between the X generation and the Y generation. This is the apt time we involve in deep discussions on the mode of formation to the priest and religious in Indian context. The socio economic, climatic, cultural changes have impacted the Zers, especially the seminarians and the uh, people in the formation. So we need to just help them. This paper explains the age and cultural aspirations of Zers who are under priestly religious formation and who got a lot of age gap of the formators and the formes. The formators are mostly from the EZ generations from the age 1965 to 1980. And uh, the Zers are from the age group for 1997 from to 2012. Ultimately, the formation in the seminaries is holistic and integrated focused. There are values, faith, along the emotional well-being and society-oriented ministry, etc. However, there is an increase of individualism, an interest of personal growth, aimed at fame and glory, interested in mobile and gaming and surfing. Partnership in the church and participation aspects gradually diminish in Zers. To rectify the limitations in the formation in the seminaries, various extensive conferences and research studies belong being conducted worldwide. The present formators who are majorly belong to the X and Y generation age group find it very hard training for priestly spiritual and renewed human formation and help new priests promote new evangelical ward Zers. I want to just go in the details about the cultural aspects. Each one of us are from a cultural and political, traditional, familial background. They have a certain influence on our behavior. In our social, in social psychology, we use two terms called nature and nurture. From a scientific perspective, nature refers to a biological, genetic, uh, predispositions that impact on human traits. Nurture, in contrast, describes the influence of learning from the environment and the society. I take some few aspects from the cultural background. First one, with the, how the Zers are influenced in the language of the modern trend. When we discuss about the language of the Zers, we talk about the way they communicate including spoken, written, and nonverbal forms of communication and expressions, contribute significantly to cultural identity. Language is a living entity, constantly evolving and adapt to a new trend of cultural influence. Indian millennials born between 1980 and 1900, sorry, 1999, and the Zers born from 1990 and 2012 have created unique slangs and languages reflect their identity, experience, and cultural nuances. They want to shorten the language. Even in seminary and priests who just perform uh, sermons, they got the shorted words. I will just give you some few examples. Like when you want to use the word like family, they don't want to use this word called family. They want to use it as fam. And they wanted to use daddy instead of daddy. They call it as dad and mom. And when we call wanted to speak about suspicion, they don't want to talk about the full word like suspicion. They wanted to just say that sus. And uh, we know this word called the uh, hoops. We mostly use it. O uh, O P P S. Oops. O S S. Oops. So these are like new coined words by the new trainers, the Zers. And this is one thing was interesting when I just was going through about the Zers psychology. 
and it's the word is called goat i don't know i just never now knew about this goat but when somebody is called as a goat we should be proud about it because they said uh, the this is said the greatest of all time is called goat so don't worry about somebody is calling you a goat you are the greatest of all time uh, the seminary in the seminary not exempt on the formation the formies are not exempt from the language and the slangs undoubtedly though unaware each one speaks in their own tone and slang of the societal background and these slangs along with the slurs and unparliamentary words this conference is a high platform or the right platform to make uh, aware of the colloquial slurs i want to just say like what are the uh, what are the ways we can help the formator and the formis to just make their languages inclusion though they are inclusive use a lot of inclusive terms but we need to help them like now there are some principles i only just say that like some principles put people first principle put people first means no mostly we say this blind lady a blind man or a saleswoman but we don't use these terms now we have to put the person first saying a woman on a sales or a person who is blind or a person who is uh, doing this job so person has to be first that's the first principle and we use like universal language uh, universal phrases and also we don't use any uh, um, we use more than our describers we don't need to describe anyone with their physique and body but we use uh, their person names also we use a lot use gender neutral languages when we address groups instead of saying uh, you guys and ladies and all that we use this people brethren friends or the common languages by the priests and religious these days also we don't use anyone like uh, recognize the impact of mental health language we don't say anyone a crazy person yes a paranoid person a psycho person or insane we don't use these terms like in the seminary or in the summons we use these words like ptsd person or ocd person or because it's like bipolar personality like that we never use anything with kind of in uh, different terms and yeah and uh, now one more thing is now the the users we use stop using uh, screen communications we used to say we have helped these ears to have face-to-face -face talks and uh, these ears are are more bit individualistic and is express they are they are sales with the brands sometimes the seminary too people are like going after brands uh, newness and when we have a talk about this conversation they don't want to talk with people they avoid this called sociophobia they don't want to have any social interactions instead of that they got like ambiguous conversations so these days like we need to talk about when we talk about the culture and customs we need to talk about the traditions too we see that like for me of these days like the z generation are, are like less respectful or sometimes they don't respect even the goods and gadgets now it's appropriate time to say to them like use appropriate use words and appropriate dress uh, in common places one of the rectors was using like never use colorless t-shirts in common programs such as meals and prayers and never use uh, toiletless slippers in the classes that was the command because we need to have a, a right attire and this generation is a very environmental conscious. They are very conscious about this environment, climate change, and all that. And Pope Francis said, it's our common home. People understand that. Only these X generation and Y generation formators have to just help them, like to uh, uh, foster the environmental conscious in the Z generation. And we need to help these art and aesthetics. Now these days, like these people use, lose lot of phones and uh, uh, gadgets they said now the Z spends five nine hours 0.9 hours over the phone every day like it was increasing like the Z generation sorry the X generation use four hours Y generation five hours the Z generation now they use 5.9 hours on phones and gaming so therefore the creativity and art of uh, aesthetics has gone down so the formatters have to encourage painting authoring books articles and based on Christian culture and creating composing songs and music. The final, I just conclude here. 
the world is materialistic and the zeers are called as more of money makers they don't want to make money and are pragmatic they want to make business so that causes uh, they want to make more money easily they said uh, they are more interested in modern gadgets and uh, upgrading them that causes to have a lot of psychological issues now in the seminary we people have got lot syndromes depressions and people have got loners, avoidant, uh, uh, avoidant personality disorders. They don't want to talk with anyone. They become a loners and always like uh, separated. And uh, we need to help their, their symptoms. And finally, there's also generations called sexual behavior is more. And they want to try with everything. And uh, this is the time like they want to just try, op talk openly and experience a lot of sexual pleasures. According to Annette 95, uh, the Zers engage in risky behaviors in sexuality and sex, uh, sensational seeking and they want to experience a lot of trends of in sex. So therefore, as for me, uh, like that, as for mates, we need to help them overcome their troubles in sexuality. Finally, conclusion. Finally, we need to remember the uh, Zen Zers or uh, is a generation or the most progressive generation. They tend to care for the other and they care for the environment and is a generation is known for its commitment and social justice and activism and having a desire for healthy work life balance and other progressive causes than others though they are digital nat natives and they are easy adapters for newness it is an invitation for the zeers to actualize their full power for the welfare of the humanity and the church and it is also an invitation to the formators who belong to the Y and X generation. Encourage, support them in the actualizations to build a beautiful world and a beautiful church. Thank you very much. God bless you.